Today we're going to go over the GL iNet Opal Travel Router. It's a very tiny travel router right here. Uh, you can use it for other things besides just uh, travel. Uh, you can use it in your RV, you can use it in a coffee shop. We'll go over some of those later in the video. But as you can see right here, um, it's approximately maybe three inches by five inches and then maybe about an inch tall or so. It's pretty compact. Uh, we have right here a WAN connection so that you can connect that into uh, a wired connection in a hotel, in your RV, even at home if you want to set up kind of a separate little network for whatever reason for testing. Uh, Etc. And then it has two LAN uh, uh, connections right here. And so this is like a really like a mini hub that just has two connections. But also has, you can also connect to it by Wi-Fi, of course. And then it has this USB 2 connector right here. And you can actually use this to uh, tether uh, your uh, cell phone if you have tethering capable in your plan. And so you can use that as one of the sources uh, for uh, Internet on this. And then the, the uh, last thing here is a uh, USB-C connector for the power. Now, one thing about this uh, USB 2 connector, on this particular model, it used to be able to, uh, you could put a USB flash drive in there and you'd be able to read off of it and share that over the network. They disabled that with one of the firmware updates uh, to enable some other features. Uh, this is the cheapest of the travel routers that uh, GL iNet makes. It's actually only about $34, $35. So it's a pretty good deal, particularly if you don't need a travel router a lot. If you're really heavily depending on a travel router or you have a use where you need to heavily depend on it, you might want to get uh, one of the uh, other models. And I'll go over what those extra features are. Uh, but this is a nice uh, little cheap travel router if you don't want to pay a lot. And it will get... Uh, the job done for most people, I think. So the other thing we have here is on either side, we have uh, these antennas that come up. And uh, so those are the antennas. And then over on this side right here, you'll see that there's a little mode switch here. That's to turn on and off VPN if you set VPN up on here. So you can actually set VPN up on here and connect multiple devices to it and turn the VPN on or off depending whether you want to use it or not and just with this one switch which is a nice feature. This other button right here is to do uh, factory resets and to reset the router. The only other thing that we have is on the front here you'll see this line this there's actually an LED behind this and this line will light up when it's on so that's how you know when it's on. So that's just the basic setup of that and we'll go into how the software is set up next. All right, so what you want to do is once you start up the uh, GL iNet Opal, you want to connect to it uh, with a computer or an iPad or even your iPhone and uh, go to the web page 192.168.8.1 and that will bring you into a logon. What, what you'll get before the logon is, uh, is it will, will ask you to set the administrative password. So set it to something that you can remember. Uh, the other thing is, is when you connect to it, you'll see here the network will be named G or the uh, Wi-Fi will be named GL dash SFT twelve zero zero. If you have an Opal, if you have one of the other routers, it will be named after their uh, model number in there, and so you connect to that router uh, via Wi-Fi. So we're going to log in now to look at the interface. It is a fairly sophisticated interface, and the first thing is um, setting up your internet connection on it. Uh, so to set up the internet connection, it's at the very top on the left side, internet. It gives you a bunch of choices. Right now, I just connected to uh, my uh, 5G Wi-Fi access point. Um, so this is just a regular Wi-Fi access point to my network, but I, I connect using 5G uh, to the internet. Uh, and here's the IP address, gateway, DNS, and all that. So the other ways that you could connect is in instead of using Wi-Fi, you could use just Ethernet by plugging a cable into your network or whatever the host network is that you have. Tethering, which you can use a USB cable connected to your... Uh, uh, smartphone in, in, and uh, use that as a an internet modem. Uh, you have to make sure that your phone and your um, 
service provider, uh, your cell phone company, uh, supports tethering, and, and sometimes you have to pay an extra fee for it. Uh, the other thing you can do is connect a cellular modem to the USB port on the Opal. Uh, you can actually look on the uh, GLINet website in there's a list of compatible modems that will work with it and I think some are listed in the manual if you look at the manual so those are the different ways that you can do it probably the most likely way would be that you would tether it use Ethernet or use Wi-Fi also remember you can use a lot of times you can use Wi-Fi to connect to your cell phone because your cell phone can be a portable hotspot uh, so so and in fact if you have a cellular modem a lot of times you can connect it can act as a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, so that's an, you can connect to it that way without having to get a modem to plug into the unit itself. All right, so let's quickly kind of go down here and look at what's going on here. Okay, so under wireless, you can uh, set up... Um, the hotspot just like you would on your home network or any other network where you're using a uh, wireless router and so if you want to change anything on here for, for example you probably want to change the uh, SSID or the SID which is the the identification of the hotspot because it's just a generic thing right now you just go to modify and it will enable you to change any of these uh, variables here uh, under Wi-Fi so you've got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi at the bottom and 5G Wi-Fi at the top and you have guest uh, passwords for them as well so you can set up your own password and and a guest password as, as well uh, if you want to have a password you can give to somebody without giving them the main one uh, here shows what clients are connected to uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot and then under VPN is where you can set up a VPN I won't go into a great detail on that, but for instance, if you had, have Nord VPN, you can set that up automatically on here, uh, or you can set up a different um, open VPN manually as well down here. So that's where all that is. You can set up Tor, which is uh, is a way to kind of make your browsing anonymous as well. Um, you can't use Tor and open VPN at the same time there's actually an application section on here which you probably won't ever need to go into but you can actually get different plugins to do different things on uh, this router that's kind of a more advanced feature of it uh, network has all your stuff like your firewall your land your DNS um, if you're your your uh, IP version six configuration, MAC addresses, uh, etc. You can even set up a DMZ on here, demilitarized zone. So if you want traffic coming into your subnet, that's where you would set that up. Then if we go down to system, system is important because it has where upgrades are, and so. Uh, when you get an upgrade, you can use this to uh, upgrade uh, the software on your router. You can also set the administrative password here if you need to reset it. Um, you just do any number of uh, system things in here. We even have logs that you can look at. So let's go back up here to Internet. So the the big takeaway from this is that you have a lot of options to set up an internet connection including Wi-Fi, uh, Ethernet cable, a tethering cable or using a cellular modem directly in to the uh, Opal um, 
travel um, travel router. Uh, so those are some things to consider. The other nice thing about this is that because it has uh, two two uh, LAN ports in it, you can connect two computers up on it. You can use it for what you would use a very small switch for. Like for instance, if you you have a new computer and you want to transfer data to it, you could actually connect, take it off your network, connect it up to this hub using the two. Uh, LAN ports and connect between those two computers, set up a share and move files, for example. Uh, if you wanted to uh, do a test of something and you wanted it on a, a separate Wi-Fi network or you, you just didn't want it out on the general Wi-Fi network, uh, whether it was at work or at home, you could set this up as a kind of a temporary solution. Uh, but pro if you have an RV, you could use it in an RV. If you're going to a hotel, you can use it to hotel. One of the advantages is if you use this and instead of just connecting directly up to the hotel um, network, you have your own kind of LAN where you can share uh, files between computers and devices. And you also... Um, have one connection for everything so 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 a lot of hotels apparently will give you uh, a login to the Wi-Fi and but they'll only give you one login so you can only log in one device at a time this will allow you to log this one device in and everything else into it All right, so now let's discuss real quickly uh, the difference between some of these uh, travel routers that uh, GLINet makes. The Opal is the cheapest one and probably uh, the best bargain for most people. Um, what you have to consider is throughput, uh, what connections you need for it, what, what, what features you need for it. And uh, this will probably cover most people. Um, the one problem with it that I mentioned was that its USB port is a USB 2, which is a little slower. And the other problem with the uh, USB 2 port on this is that it no longer supports having a flash drive on it because when they updated firmware a couple of years ago, they had to uh, remove that functionality to add other functionality to it, apparently. So it's a pretty solid router, particularly if you need a travel router that often and uh, it has pretty good performance on it. Uh, and in most scenarios, probably depending on how fast the internet was that you're connected to, you wouldn't notice anything in speed. The nice feature on this is that it has two LAN ports, so you could walk, put, put um, an ethernet cable directly into two, up to two devices, such as laptops or desktops or whatever you're connecting into it. The next one up, the Slate Plus, has a uh, USB 3 instead of a USB 2 port in it, and it still supports putting a flash drive or, or, or a uh, USB drive into it so that you can share it. Uh, it's supposed to have a slightly faster speed on uh, 2.5 gigahertz band. I think this has 400 megabits as opposed to 300 megabits to this, but on five uh, gigahertz uh, band, they both have uh, 867 megahertz. So they're pretty much about the same. The, the main thing is the speed of the USB port and um, the fact that you can still put a USB drive into that. So that's the main difference. And so it's $30 more for those that functionality if you, if you need it or you really want that functionality. We go up. Once again, in, in this one over here, the barrel, um, it has Wi-Fi 6, so it has faster Wi-Fi on it. It has a USB 3 uh, port on it, but it only has one LAN port on it. The nice thing about these other two, with the two LAN ports, is it's almost like a mini switch. So if you need to use it just to connect two uh, computers together for whatever reason, uh, on their own little network, like you're transferring files or something, that's a nice feature about it that and then we have uh the most expensive one here which is well the most expensive of the wi-fi ones is uh this slate um and it it's uh 
Slate AX, and it it has Wi-Fi six on it as well. It has a uh, USB three port on it. But the other nice feature of this, if we go in here, if you see on the side here, there's a, a thing so you can put a uh, an SD card in the side of it. So it has a uh, micro SD card slot on the side of it, so that you can put that in for storage that you can share. So it's kind of built into it, so you can do it either with a USB drive or with just a uh, micro SD card. And then finally, I, uh, this one right here is called the Muddy version two. It actually has uh, a uh, it has a a four G cellular modem built into it so you can you can use cellular on this instead of just wi-fi so it has the modem built in it directly so instead of uh tethering like a cell phone to it or a smartphone to to your travel router this has it built in but you would have to get that set up with a uh, service provider like uh, t-mobile or at&t or something